What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to bring you my Hammer of the Ancients or Hoda Barbarian build for Diablo 4 in the end game. We're only level 80, but Hammer of the Ancient absolutely slaps. I'm sure you guys have seen this all over the interwebs and in YouTube and just seen how strong it actually is. I wish this storm thing would stop chasing me. So today we're going to go over everything that you need to know how to play the build, the skills, the gear, as well as the Paragon, which is going to be really, really cool. And I think I have a really cool way that I did it just to kind of maximize your fury. So let's go over your uh, uh, skill tree. Let's get right into it. So starting off, we are going Lunging Strike. This is probably by far the best um, Fury Generator or Resource Generator that the Barbarian has. Argument could be made for Flay or possibly uh, Bash, but I still think Lunging Strike is just really good because it absolutely closes the distance for enemies that are trying to get away. We're taking it all the way up to Combat Lunging Strike for the additional Berserking. We're going to have some added benefits here from Berserking, which is very, very important. If you guys don't remember, Berserking is going to give you increased move speed and a damage increase. It's about 15% increased uh, damage and 25% move speed as far as I remember. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. Down to our core skills, of course, we're taking Hammer of the Ancients. We're maxing this baby out all the way up to uh, Furious Hammer of the Ancients, which deals 1 point or 1% times additional damage for each point of Fury you have when you spend it. The whole point of this build is to get our Fury generated all the way to the top and do as much damage when we smash, okay? Now, one passive here, we're taking Pressure Point. This is on a lucky hit. Our core skills have a chance to make them vulnerable. However, we do run the exploit Glyph, which is going to make enemies vulnerable. This just helps to keep them vulnerable as we can continue to attack them if they're not already dead. Then we're going to come down to our defensive skills. Of course, we are running Triple Shouts. You guys are going to see Triple Shouts, but we're adding one additional defensive skill here, and that is Ground Stomp. Ground Stomp is going to give us a chance to knock our enemies down and stun them, and we're going to do an increased times multiplier for damage when we stun them this is really really good for fast clearing large mobs as well as soloing bosses we're taking three points into rallying cry all the way up to tactical for uh fury generation as well as just overall resource regeneration very very strong then of course we're taking challenging shout this is the big daddy shout that we have this is going to allow us to increase our maximum life and then while we are active each time we take damage we generate fury and it taunts enemies for nearby damage reduction all the way up to tact uh, tactical challenging shout very very strong next we have war cry all the way into mighty war cry this is going to give us some fortify as well as give us berserking for four seconds this is also really really good to give us some more increased damage for us and our nearby allies okay challenging shout is super super strong uh the other big reason we want rallying cries because it's our only form of unstoppable so you got to make sure you have that our passives are over here in our brawling skills. We're having three points in the booming voice, so the uh, all the cries last longer, or our shout skills. And then three points in a raid leader uh, to give us some more healing for maximum life. However, if you did want to do this to uh, have a little bit more damage reduction, you could, but I opted out for it. Next, we're having a little bit more damage reduction while we're berserking, which is going to happen pretty much all the time. Then we're going to have prolific fury. While berserking, our fury generation is increased. So we get a huge uh, Berserk here. We get Berserk from Lunging Strike, which is very, very important. So we're going to be Berserking all the time. Now we're going to come down to Weapon Master Skills. We're taking one point into Hamstring, which gives us bleeding effects on our weapons. And then we're going to be able to slow them down, which is very strong. Next, three points into Pit Fighter for increased damage and damage reduction. Then three points into No Mercy to have a 9% increased Critical strike chance against immobilized, stunned, or slowed enemies. However, this is from an item contribution. So normally I would not have this, but this is just an item contribution. Just tax on there. Otherwise, I wouldn't have it. You just need the three points in Pit Fighter. Next, we're doing one point into Thick Skin for some more Fortify. And then three points into Counter Offensive. While we're Fortified over 50%, we deal 12% increased damage. Our Fortify is going to be through the roof. Next, into our Ultimate Skills, we're not taking any. However... You do have the option here, guys, to take Wrath of the Berserker with Hoda, okay? Wrath of the Berserker will not only give us a lot of Fury uh, regeneration and increased damage, but it's going to give us increased move speed and give us another form of Unstoppable and Berserking. So, if you did not want to run Stomp, you could take the point out of Stomp, take the extra few points out of Rallying Cry or Challenging Shout if you really, really needed to. 
and put them into um, Wrath of the Berserker. I have tested this with Wrath of the Berserker. It works just fine. However, I prefer the stomp for a gear piece or ground stomp for a particular gear piece. So you'll see as you already saw in the gameplay. Our passives here down in our ultimate skills. We're doing three points into wallop while using a bludgeoning weapon, which we are. We do increase damage if the enemy is stunned and vulnerable. Huge. Concussion on a lucky hit skills using bludgeoning weapons, which we are. Have a chance to stun the enemy again and up to 45% chance if it's a two-handed, which we are using. Next, heavy-handed. While using two-handed weapons, we have an increased critical strike damage. Huge. Our key passive, guys, we are doing unbridled rage. Our core skill costs, or excuse me, deals 135% increased damage, but costs 100% more fury. So our Hammer of the Ancients is going to cost 100 fury, and it's going to do 135% increased damage. Absolutely fantastic, especially on a 50% lucky hit. If we take this away, I just want to see real quick live here if it changes. Yeah, so our fury cost is normally 24, but it already factors that in there, so it's 50 fury per shot which is another reason why we want to have as much fury as possible so we can at least do one to three swings of hammer of the ancients so that is our skills guys our expertise we're always going to be doing two-handed axe expertise there an argument could be made for two-handed sword if you are doing any bleeding variants however two-handed axe is just far superior in my opinion because you do 15 times increased damage to vulnerable enemies and everything is going to be vulnerable no matter what okay now into our character and abilities before we go showcase uh a little bit more gameplay footage for you guys so this build is not optimized to the best but i got it pretty close and again we're only level 80. so starting in the helm guys we are going to have um iron blood this is an option you could definitely swap this out for something else i like it for the damage reduction you're going to gain 3.6% damage reduction for each nearby bleeding enemy up to 18%. This is always going to be online. Next, we have Primal Breastplate of Numbing Wrath. Each point of fury generated while at maximum fury generates or grants 11 fortify, which is really cool. Again, you could opt out for this one. You don't necessarily need it. However, you're going to be generating uh, fury pretty rapidly with our shouts and our skills. In our gloves, we're doing um, Gauntlets of the Expectant. Attacking enemies with a base skill increases the damage of your next core skill. This is only going to be really used once we're like super low on fury. And we're not really generating it with our shouts and we have to use our basic attack. Otherwise, our fury is always going to be up. So we're not we're going to be really using Lunging Strike. But this is very good on the back end when we have to go out of our rotation. On our pants, we're doing Temetry. Okay, the reason we're doing Temetry is the, the effects that heal us beyond 100% life. Give us a barrier and we pair this with our uh conceited here so we deal increased damage while we have a barrier these two pair very very well for the barbarian typically i'm not a big fan of temetry uh because it's only a barrier of your max life from your base life it's not an increase and this is it's just it's really good for barbarian because barbarian has a lot of life but it's not good for other classes like sork rogue etc um, however, if you do feel like this really, really helps, then you are good to go. Uh, next, we have Ghostwalker Boots. I really love this. While we're unstoppable, we get to have the increased move speed. Because, again, guys, this build is very, very fast. This also triggers when we do our Shout, which is awesome. And we get the increased move speed. And our weapon, of course, we're doing uh, Hammer of the Ancients, the Quakes. It's the Ancestral Force. Quakes out and does 84% of its base damage or of its damage to enemies i do have a higher one here i just need to put it on i just haven't yet pretty sure i have a big daddy one right here 48 percent. yeah two off max next of course this is the reason that we're doing a lot of our stun so not only do our passives give us some increased damage from stun but the retribution power on our sword is going to give us distant enemies have an eight percent percent chance to be stunned that we don't really care about what we do care about is the 32 percent increased damage to stun enemies so when we ground stomp we stun them for three seconds when we hammer of the ancient on a lucky hit we have, we can make them stunned our lucky hit chance is 50 percent this is always going to be triggering for huge amounts of damage absolutely love this of course we just went over conceited in our last two-handed, which I'm going to be swapping out for a really juicy sword I have somewhere. I think it's right here. I think 
this one or this one, one of these two. We have the Limitless Rage. Each point of fury you generate while at maximum fury grants your core skill 4% times increased damage up to 60%. This is massive. Okay, so if we generate more fury while we're at maximum, we just do even more damage, which allows us to crit for insane amounts, even at level 80. In our amulets and rings, we're doing edge masters, maxed out edge masters for 30% increased damage based on our available resource when cast. So the whole premise behind this is to get Hammer of the Ancients, have our fury get to max or pretty dang close, drop Hammer of the Ancients down and do massive amounts of damage. On our rings, we have a bold chieftain's band. Whenever you cast a cooldown or cast a shout, its cooldown is reduced per nearby enemy up to a maximum of six. So we're going to cast all three shouts. It's going to help bring all the cooldowns, and we're going to be able to reset those and have those up pretty often. I have the basic one here, guys, for the circling of echoing fury um, because I haven't found a better one. But your shout skills generate two fury per second while active. You really want to get a max one here or at least a three. It really, really helps. So that is the gear, guys. Last but not least, we're going to go into our Paragon board, and you guys will see some single target damage here. In our Paragon board, it's pretty simple. We're going to go up. We are going to take Brawn for more physical damage and max life. We're going to come up and grab Crusher. However, you do have some other options here. The only reason that Crusher is actually really good is because we are using a Mace, and it helps us deal increased overpower damage. However, you could swap this out for Marshall. You can also swap this out for uh, Dominate. Or you could swap this out for Embrider uh, to do increased damage while you are healthy, which is always going to happen. Um, Might is also very good. Uh, the notes here we're going to take is more armor and strength and damage with Maces, which is really, really strong. Then we're going to be taking Raw Power for more physical damage and damage with Maces. Super powerful. Up here into our board, we're going to be taking Warbringer. For every 75 Fury we spend, we gain 12% of our max life as Fortify. It only takes two Hammer of the Ancients to trigger this, and we're going to be Hammering of, of the Ancient all the time, so we are always going to have Warbringer triggered. This is going to help us stay alive. Uh, we are taking Conduit for, um, or what is this, Conditioned for uh, uh, all resists, which as soon as they fix them, this will be a lot better, but we got the 10% Strength, uh, or the 10 Strength, which is huge. Our Glyph, we're taking Exploit, obviously, for more vulnerable damage. And when we damage enemies, they become vulnerable, which is very, very important. Next, we have Raw Power for more physical damage. Super strong. Of course, we grab Warbringer. We come up here and we grab Hungering Fury. Max Fury. Two Fury on kill. This is very important, guys. We're taking all these notes here to increase our Fury for more damage overall. But we also want it for the Fury on kill, which is very, very important. Then we're going to come over and we're going to grab Guarded advanced for more damage while fortified we will always be fortified okay so we got all those and then i come down and again we're going to take more max fury and max life here which is really going to help us top off which is why you see me have 183 fury only at level 80 next board two guys we only have two boards right now or three boards total because i'm only level 80 but we have some really strong options here at the end you can really just make this your own but these ones i think you definitely need we're going to be taking the Flawless Technique board. We're not going to use this, but we are going to take it because of the physical damage here and crit damage. More and more crit damage. We're going to be critting all the time with Hammer of the Ancients. That's why we're going to be doing 5, 8 million crits, which is what you guys have already seen in the gameplay. Then we're going to come up and we're going to grab Territorial. Damage to close enemies. We're always going to be close. We're not doing any range here and the damage reduction. Very important. We're not taking heavy blows because we're not doing one-handeds. We're using two-handeds. However, we are going to grab Brash for damage reduction against close enemies. Very, very strong. Okay. Super, super powerful. And then we're on our way up to the next board. You want to take as many willpower and strength nodes as you can. Uh, Dexterity also really helps to give us better chances to crit. All right. Let's take down the boss at level 80. Level 86, Spear Caller. We're going to pop all our shots, pop our stomp. Hit him a couple times, get our Fury up, smash him, dead. Single target damage just does not last, guys. It's not a big deal at all. Okay, so we will grab Marshall. I really like Marshall here as well. You could also swap Marshall out for um, Crusher instead because of the after you get this to 15, after casting a shout skill, the active cooldown of every shout, shout skill is reduced by 1.2 seconds. Very, very strong. So we're going to upgrade this one. But guys, that is my endgame game. Hoda build it is absolutely insane it is by far my favorite class that 
I like it. I'm probably going to be playing Barbarian at the start of Season 1, pending any changes. So, like the video, guys. Comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. Also, subscribe if you guys are new. And as always, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.